Let's welcome on board Sanjeev Bhasi joins in on the show to chat fundamentals. There's also Sony Patnaik who's joining in on the technicals. And Sanjeev, I'm just going to take forth that point that my colleague Sharad was bringing up, that the block deal action is certainly a lot on D Street, Axis Bank, Gland Pharma, Shilpa Medicare, what have you, all in the spotlight. What do you make of it? Good morning, uh, Awan. Firstly, to you and the entire community and all uh, viewers, a very, very happy Navratri. Uh, may you all be well blessed by health and wealth and prosperity. Uh, yes, so the, you know, the underlying two things which are very synonymous is one is the big block deal. Second is the, the advent of the primary market where you are seeing, uh, you know, the, a plethora of new issues, which is typically a sign of a bull market, you know, reaching a, some sort of a crescendo. So not that I'm saying there's a near term top. Yes, but uh, it's telling you that... Uh, Exits and entries are at full flows, and particularly some of the longer term uh, private equity or uh, equity with money which had entered in, a, you know, say about two years back, two years, they are, they are seeing a very, very bright exit. Uh, if you remember, big capital came into access closer to 450, 500. When, uh, the change of guard was evident when, uh, you know, the uh, Shika Sharma and all were in, in, the, in, in, the, in the realm of change. And I think the bank has more than doubled from there. So, uh, like we said, it's a glass half full, half empty. It indicates the left feeling where people are now looking for uh, excellent stock to pick and, and an exit for uh, old people who have been holding and are now wanting to encash as the bull market reaches a crescendo. So, be a little watchful here. <clears throat> I, I would say uh, some of the uh, large caps are still looking attractive, but it's a time be a little cautious because the market looks overstressed on all parameters. Okay. So, uh, Sanjeev, given that it's an auspicious day, let's take an auspicious start. Let's, uh, you know, help our viewers understand where is it that there is a buying opportunity and where do you think the market is looking top like you just, uh, you know, highlighted? Yeah. So, Aisha, the buying opportunity continues in stock-specific uh, ways and you've seen some of the PSUs do outperformance. Particularly, uh, the you know, the China effect where you saw that yesterday it was uh, iron ore or uh, uh, plastic soda or specialty chemicals which are making a comeback. Uh, and in turn with that, you will see your effect on the Indian side. UPL has been one of our topics, which we think is a very, very relevant good play. It's just trading at one time price to book. It is the largest specialty chemical player in India and one of the largest in the world. Uh, they were indicated their uh, divestment in the same that they want to encash part of the Devanta uh, stake which is valued at something like $9 billion and that could be a very positive way in reducing your debt structure because return on equity will improve. Secondly, uh, the top seeds business, particularly Sunflower, Corn, Carnola is seeing an uptick in prices and I think the risk reward here at 485, 490 UPL is very, very, uh, very, very skewed towards an upside. I don't rule out 650 levels coming in the next one year or maybe end of this year. And I think this would be a perfect buy. Second would be Gale. I think Gale is again poised to come out with very good numbers. And we've seen gas prices, the distribution flow get very, very strong. So Gale would be my top pick. But, you know, be cautious that it's at a 52-week all-time high in, in nearby. So, but I still think there's a 10% right there. And uh, lastly, it would be... Uh, the third name would be uh, India Bull Real Estate, which I think is a grossly undervalued stock. And now with capital infusion coming in from the likes of Embassy, Blackstone, Punawala, you have very, very marquee names. You cannot have a trade at 7,000 crore market cap. 4,000 crore has been committed by a very, very marquee names. And it tells you that uh, the land bank which they own is owned, all owned by them in person. So I think this stock is due for a re-rating. It has moved sharply from that 110 to 138, 140. But I still think the stock in the next or by the end of the year can hit 50 easily. So these are two, three marquee names. Uh, rest would be a little cautious on uh, the, the index over here per se because the weight of Reliance and the LNT and maybe a couple of stocks is seeing that the ETF, out, ETF inflow is now nearing a crescendo. Okay, Sony, hi. Come on board. Are you seeing on that uh, the same on the charts as well? 
the Nifty now looking a little bit like it's hitting a ceiling? Good morning, Anshisha. Thank you so much for having me on the show. So I think Nifty, definitely we can see that, you know, it's at all time high. One may take a cautious approach. There could be some, uh, you know, more momentum left on the upside before one can actually take that cautious approach and, you know, start hedging the positions. Means that the support has risen now from 20 to 300 to 20 to 500, 20 to 600 is also acting as a good support. Uh, there could be a stance that where they test 22,800 first and then you can see some profit booking coming back again up to 20 to 500 and then reinitiate the longs. Ultimately, between 20 to 800, 23,000 can act as a resistance zone from where we can see some profit booking taking place. And, you know, this could be the you know ultimate rally that we're talking about once where, you know, the index drops out uh, around 23,000 levels. So similarly, talking about Bank Nifty as well, it has given a good breakout. Uh, you know, it was showing very strong, aggressive pullovers. So Bank Nifty somewhere around 14 and 550,000 can, it can those levels and from those levels only we can see some profit booking in place uh, most likely by the end of the week also these levels can get tested but after that definitely one should take in a cautious approach or at least start hedging the positions okay fair enough meantime um sanjeev wanted to get in your thoughts as well on what's going on within the entire banking space because while the q4 updates have been fairly held it doesn't seem like anything is incrementally wrong. They haven't quite been participating in this large cap led rally that we've witnessed. What's your take? Well, I, correct. And <clears throat> Avan, that was to do with the uh, weightage of HDFC Bank and the underperformance. <clears throat> and I think now that uh, private banks are starting to perform. And I've been of this view that take some money off the OPSUs and get into private banks. I still think HDFC, ICICI access. Kotak, these are going to lead from the front. <clears throat> and, and if anything, the index has to go higher than Bank Nifty has to go to 50,000. But look at some smaller names. I think RBL Bank, uh, uh, Dhan Lakshmi Bank, some of the mid and small cap banks are looking very, very attractive. Their numbers, their credit deposit uh, ratios, low rates, all these are going to add up to positive numbers. Uh, if, if anything, <clears throat> uh, the guidance from... Uh, HDFC Bank has been positive as far as reduction in credit deposit ratio. And we know that the inflows into equity SIPs and mutual funds has been a cause of concern on the liability side. But I think now with the credit expanding, uh, banks' uh, credit offtakes have been very, very strong. So I think numbers will be very strong. In fact, I think private banks could come out with very, very stellar numbers. So overweight banks, particularly the large cap uh, private and select mid cap banks. <clears throat> sure. Jeev, haven't had the chance to discuss what is it that you did with your Paytm holding initially? Still holding on? Uh, no, Aisha, as a disclosure, we have exited Paytm because we thought that the underperformance might continue. We got the opportunity, we exited Paytm, we have exited Z also. Uh, they, may, they, may, they may be, these have been two of the weak calls. Unfortunately, we wanted get into better place where this underperformance might stay for a long period, longer than expected period. And who wants to fight uncertainty in a bull market? If they cannot perform at 22 and a half thousand, then God forbid, if we hit 20,000, you'll be really in the doldrums. So I think if you have a slightly longer term view, it is better to get into more marquee names, which we have done in the, in the recent uh, month.